Thank you all very much for being here. Um, first, a big thank you to the School of Canadian Irish Studies for hosting this space, and to Lisa Helke, of course, and Bart Simon for participating um, for a beginning part in this, uh, in this project, or an ending part, perhaps. Um, also, of course, to Larry Blair for chairing. Thank you very much. And, need it be said, but thank you so much to Rona, Jordan, and Chris, my wonderful and extraordinary advisors, supervisors, friends, and colleagues who have made this such an incredibly interesting, interesting time. I um, want to also thank Concordia generally, because without Concordia, and specifically the Indie program, this would not be taking place. This uh, PhD in gastronomy fits at Concordia and fits within Indie wonderfully well. So I, I'm incredibly grateful to them. Obviously, also to all of you, it is really fun to see so many of my community here. It makes me feel very, very happy. Um, I also want to acknowledge the many First Nations over whose land we've traveled and stood ongoingly and today. So this project is about food and its complex nature, and about the milieus in which food, humans, language and meaning, space and time all perform together to produce what we understand as the realities of food. Specifically, the project is about gastronomy, and a reinterpretation of gastronomy as a practice that deals with the ecological performances of food milieus. Because those performances produce instability and transformation, gastronomy is also about exploring ways to study and make representations of these things. Things that, as the anthropologist James Clifford has said of culture, do not always sit still for their portraits. This presentation will not dive into every intricacy of the whole project. That's, of course, what the dissertation and the appendices were for, or partially. Um, instead, I'll use the time as an occasion to invite us to reflect on food, on its complexities, and on the issue of doing research on such things. Oh, next slide. So not long ago, I produced a different kind of presentation about this project. I used the framework of a dinner party, which you can see on screen, to communicate some of the large-scale and small-scale ideas that are part of performative gastronomy. Today I will be briefer and depend somewhat more on words, although of course many words were spoken at that dinner, and there's also food here on these tables around us, so perhaps the presentations are not so different after all. Please do eat as I talk. Um, you may feel it's not appropriate to approach tables and eat when there's food on them, but that's what food is all about, so please do. And I have no formal plans for it. They are all references to different elements of the work that I've done over the years. None of them will be too shocking to your sensibilities, I expect, although we never know. Um, some of the other things I've made over the years have been intended to. These do not have the same intention. Two of the words in the title of my dissertation, I think, deserve just a little bit of brief unpacking. They're meant to be both provocative as a point of departure for the text and also as, as so as to create what I call interferences with each other that invite continuing investigation. Next slide. The first word is ecosophy. Ecosophy is borrowed, in this case, from the philosopher Félix Guattari, and it's a notion that invokes both ecology and philosophy. These are two domains that are very useful and, in fact, critical in the study of food. In Guattari's sense, it is a call for ethical political consciousness about the choices and actions that we make in the world. It is also a call to attention to the effects that those actions and choices produce. In this project, I'm using ecosophy as a cue to attend to the hierarchies among different kinds of agency in food, different agencies of both living and non-living things, human and non-human. These interdependencies also include the relationships and responsibilities within food knowledge systems. That's ecosophy, made out of rings, not really. So the next slide is gastronomy. Gastronomy is a word that has many historical meanings. Uh, it invokes many, many different histories of usage, uh, both of elitism and power, as well as food knowledge, and the communication of food knowledge. Uh, but culinary and commercial practices come into gastronomy, and then also, as I said, power, but also the privilege and authority that someone who might be named a gastronomer carries. Next slide. For me, 
Gastronomy regards food as being lively, complex, and intersubjective. And then it tries to deal with those characters without undoing them too much. Next slide. Where ecosophy and gastronomy meet, perhaps, is in performance. Performance and the companion notion of performativity are ways to think about systems in movement, both physically and conceptually, um, and about the ways that those movements need to be dealt with in study. Performance means thinking about systems as assemblages of actors participating together, about reality as being a dynamic and emergent state of things rather than pre-given or fixed, and about transformation, therefore, as being a constant presence in any system. The dinner party that I mentioned was what we here at Concordia call a research creation dissertation component. That is, it is a representation of a doctoral trajectory that uses a made or performed thing to express the thesis. Research creation has been a useful way for me, very much so, in, using, uh, in working with things that change, like food and ecologies, because it involves continuing cycles of work. So the work changes as the thing that we're working on also changes. And that has involved thinking, doing, reflecting, reporting, feedback, and so on and on and on. <laughs> it also involves paying attention to certain passage points. This is a word that has become useful to me in recent days. Those passage points that are the articulations between cycles of work when knowledge translation and transformation takes place. Next slide. My dissertation dinner was one such moment. It was a passage point that required translating a rather extensive project on gastronomy into a rather focused form of public representation. It involved constructing a food performance, a mode of communication that made the end point of one thing, my project, into the beginning of another, perhaps my and other people's future ways of thinking and doing with food. For me, it was an end, it was a beginning, but it was also very much a middle it implicated great change. By translating my project from a lived experience of my project into a representation of lived experience for the people who were there, I produced change in what had happened and what was about to happen. As filmmaker Liz Miller has said, the interesting thing about translation is change. Something is always added and something is always taken away. So this moment now is another translational passage point. In preparing for today, I had to decide how to translate, again, the many years of my work in gastronomy into a rather short presentation. How to use words and a few images, and gestures, of course, that's me, to represent ideas and emotions and transformations. And some things have perhaps mercifully been added, and some things will absolutely also be taken away. There are questions and responses that are coming. Those will be some of the additions, of course, as well. Like the dinner, also, this talk has involved a constructed framework. So as those of you who have read the dissertation and a few of the rest of you know, the notion of framing systems is important to me. Framing systems are both useful and problematic. They imply a series of starting assumptions, a view of how things are in the world, and ways of taking action and then reflecting on what happens. For this talk, the framing system involves three words. It has already been part of this talk, but now I'm formalizing it as I tell you. Instead of seeming reductionist, I hope that this will enable us to think together in multiple possible directions and to imagine at once the simplicity and complexity of food and food scholarship. Next slide. The first word is with. With speaks to the ways that food is, to ways that humans and food are inseparable, and to the ways that academic work about food can be. The second word is do. Do involves the actions that take place in the world, the motivations and pulsions behind those acts, the effects that those acts produce, and the power and agencies that interlace and complicate them all. And the third word is no. No relates to the nature of reality, to our capacity to produce and possess that reality, and to the ways in which our capacities are formed and evolve over time. Next slide. For many years, I have been inspired by the idea of and. This is a more useful way, I think, of seeing things than its counterpoint, or. 
and brings things together rather than situating them apart, and also acknowledges multiplicity and the potential for disagreement to be productive. Yet I've started to think that perhaps a more useful variant of and is with. Eve Sedgwick has written about the importance of figuring actors as sitting beside each other, not on top, not beneath, not as foundation, but with. And so in the same way, this non-egalitarianism, but interrelation is the way I'm tentatively thinking about with. It's a way of building both multiplicity and relationality into gastronomy. With is how food and humans are together in life. We're not separated bodies, but things that become each other when they are together. With is how language, meaning, material, action, space, and time are together in food. These things are always inseparable from each other. With is how I believe people should be in making knowledge about food together. Collectively, differently, contradictorily, and cumulatively. With helps me imagine food study as performance, scripted and improvised, material and discursive, embedded and reflective. With also helps imagine how food practices of theorizing, researching, writing, and sharing work can and should happen together. With is both an invitation for others to participate and also an implication that participation has already taken place even when we don't necessarily recognize it. <laughs> and even when I don't invite it in gastronomy. With is not just the addition of things, but an acknowledgement that when things are with each other, new things happen that might not have otherwise been predicted. So in these ways, for gastronomy, with opposes hierarchies, supports collectivity in making knowledge about food, it embodies the unexpected and the performative that are part of what I'm talking about here, and it's critical, I think, to an ecosophic approach. Next slide. Doing, of course, has been equally central. About a year before starting this uh, PhD program, I was in a design certificate program here at Concordia. And one of our then teachers, Jake Moore, kept reminding us that every action leaves a mark. And it's an idea that has been re reinforced for me over and over since then. Doing makes things. It leaves inscriptions. It alters the next reality of things. And in so many other languages, to do and to make are the same verb. While we may know that implicitly in English, or in some of our practices, we don't always attend to it. And it has been remarkable in this project when doing and making have suddenly and explicitly been one and the same thing. Doing is how food and humans make each other. Acts, gestures, movements, and processes that produce bodies, significance, and change. We do food, but food does us. Doing, and importantly, paying attention to the details of doing, is how knowledge about food is made, and other kinds of doing is how that knowledge and the value of that knowledge is distributed and then rearranged. <coughs> doing implies access and privilege, that there's a space and the resources to do. It also implies that uh, there's freedom, empowerment, and apparatuses that require that we check our privilege when we do. We check our authority. So in contrast, doing may also, strangely, perhaps counterintuitively, imply that there was not a privileged space, but that a space was nonetheless created through some act of doing. So in this way, doing evokes a kind of mutuality between occupation and empowerment, a theme that we know well in Montreal and other large cities, but also one that certainly underlies what I think I've done here with gastronomy. The third word of my framing is no. Next slide. This is a word I feel most tentative about, because although knowing is certainly a central part of academic work, the more I sought to know in this project, the more I felt that the elusiveness of knowing has increased. So I'm going to leave knowing unpinned down for now, and we'll come back to it in a bit. Next slide. Over the past years, knowing, doing, and with have woven themselves throughout my work. The chunk of research on Boulevard Saint-Laurent here in Montreal 
began with the tension between textual portraits of the foodscape and my own lived experience as a resident on the street. I led walking and eating tours of the Maine even as I walked its length on my own several times a week. In this way, I absorbed its rhythms and meaning and sensations into my conscious and non-conscious body. Performances about and with the streetscape were both formally done and gradually known. In sharing them with other people, that knowledge became a production with them rather than for them. People with people, food with people, discourse with matter, knowing with doing. The seminar work was about transformation and stability. The street with me, with other people, with this project. And it definitely changed how this project continued to unfold, as well as helping to stabilize my own understanding about what I was doing with it. Next slide. With, do, and no continued to play out during Displace, the immersive sensory installation project on which I collaborated with Chris Salter, Tez, and David Howes, among many other people, some of whom are here. We put ourselves together with each other and with our diverse perspectives and purposes for this project. We combined participants and their senses with a social spatial environment, with questions about perception and interpretation. My material acts, making liquid and solid edible matter, both did things to food and did things to people. It enabled some of them to know and do the experience within this place. And in reflecting collectively and individually as a team, in debriefing the participants who went through the experience, additional cycles of doing and knowing were added. Certainly as I wrote about Displace for the dissertation and in other places, my doing with text changed how I knew what had transpired. As I wrote about taste and cooking and gusting and improvisation, I was also coming to produce my understanding of what's become now gastronomy for me. Next slide. In the last phase of my work at the University of Gastronomic Sciences, the relations between knowing and doing seemed <laughs> perhaps most evident. I taught classes of master students, knowing and doing with them the ideas and practices I wanted to know and do better myself. We dealt with the abstractions of distributed agency and ecological models, performative language and lively matter, and we then turn to some perhaps more helpful people than those somewhat abstracted theorists and looked to uh, post-methodology and philosophy and performance and design to help give us the tools that grounded the very broad ideas that we'd explored in words and helped ground them in food, in specific practices. We also had arguments and elations and upsets and triumphs, and we made and ate many things, sometimes alone, sometimes together. We came together in spaces and we moved apart again. I was very, very much with and within this milieu. Together we explored, explored a space of gastronomy that the university itself seems to have suggested to me in 2005. So what's there with with and knowing and doing as well? Now, after three years of being with this specific group of students, in that way, I know and do gastronomy differently. The residues of that time are in me, they are in them, and they are in the colleagues and societies that we continue to engage with. As I imagined how to talk today, and these three words rose up in my mind in a taxi cab going from Bra to Torino at 4.30 in the morning, no lie, I was both pleased and worried that such seemingly straightforward notions would simplify the very long, detailed, and complex nature of what I've done. With, do, and know certainly describe the gastronomy I've made, yet they equally might describe anyone's work at any time. But perhaps that is the useful thing in passage points. They are convergences where our multiple worlds converge and coexist. So one more thread remains, and one that I hope will usefully lead forward into the questioning and responding that we will continue to do. <laughs> I hope this work will also continue to trigger those thoughts, not just in this room, but with me and with other people, because of this final thread. And that's some thread, that's some implications about this framework, this with, do, no framework that I've constructed. As I've said, framing systems are both useful and problematic. They create order, which is very useful. 
and they also create externalities sometimes, which I have said is problematic in food. But as I thought in that taxi cab, I thought perhaps what is outside of my framing is also within it. Next slide. So the issue is this, when we talk about with, it also requires attending to not with. When we do and know with food, attention must be called to not do and not know. Not with is what happens when we make choices, when we exclude certain pieces from the picture. I have made numerous cuts in making this PhD project. I left out large swaths of food history and theory and practice with which I might otherwise have engaged. I ignored pieces of work that I did over the years, art and curatorial projects, teaching and writing, private and public cooking practices, and many, many others. The text itself, despite all those end notes and those rather robust appendices, involved many cuts. There are words and images that express lots of other ideas that are simply not there now. So not with has been just, about, just as much a part of this project as with. And what is not here, not with, in this moment, here and now, suggests also an important set of things that gastronomy might eventually be with in the then and there of its future. For its part, not do is also about absences. And for performative gastronomy, not doing is important. Not doing allows others to do. When I do not do, someone else might. Not doing, therefore, also allows empowerment to emerge rather than, in some way, be given. Not doing allows reflection to transpire, although reflection might be considered another kind of doing. And not doing may involve the quiet and modest methods that John Law suggests for a future of interdisciplinary work to actually work. Not doing for me may enable gastronomy to be the mutable and invitational practice that I would love it to be. And not doing is very often quite hard. And so the last one we come to, not knowing. I used to think that not knowing was hard. Perhaps that was the hardest thing I could do. And I was once asked, about ten years ago, by an ex-partner and by my then therapist, to try living in the not knowing for a year. To let go of my interest, let us say, in control, and to try to just be. And I did try. And I think I succeeded. And in retrospect, not knowing then seems to have what eventually led me to gastronomy. Just over six years ago, <clears throat> all right, just over six years ago, with my wet winter boots, not unlike today, squeaking down the design department hallway, I walked towards Rona Richmond Keneally's, Keneally's office for the first time. Warren Belasco had told me the previous summer that, the, she, the, that Rona would be the very best person for me to talk to about these ideas that I was having. So I went in and sat down, and she looked at me, and I said to her, I want to do a PhD in gastronomy. And she looked back at me and said, what does that mean? <laughs> and I said, uh, somewhat chastened, I don't really know. She said, go away and come back when you do. <laughs> it worked. It doesn't sound at all like you. <laughs> so some time went by. <clears throat> and just about four weeks ago, I was sitting in a classroom in Polenzo, Italy, talking with my students about the impossibility of knowing the absolute truth of food. We were looking at some just writings about ethnography. I said, well, if ethnography is not true, then why do we do it? I suggested that in our collective reactions to it, in our agreements and our disagreements that we verbalize, in the feelings and thoughts that we have and then exchange, we might, in any case, make some knowledge, even if it was not the knowledge. They seemed really frustrated by that sense of ambiguity. So across this window of time between my squeaky boots and my silent students, what I have come to know about gastronomy is that I still don't really know. And with that, I am very pleased and satisfied. Next slide. To not know 
within academia is not hard, but it can be complicated. Not knowing is a space that is not simply occupied, and it can leave both oneself and one's colleagues feeling uncomfortable. For gastronomy, however, not knowing is perhaps much more important than knowing. To not know food is to leave ambiguity in the portrait and to continue a process of learning. It is to accept that a subject as grand and entangled and personal and universal as food is not for us to absolutely know at all. Instead, I would say gastronomy is a space of attention, one in which to participate, in which to be with food, in which to do things, and then to wait and see what happens. Thank you. <laughs>